In this video, myself and colleagues are going to present our paper, a longitudinal study of pervasive display personalization. This work was conducted by colleagues from Lancaster University in the UK, the University of Manchester in the UK, the University of Lugano in Switzerland, and the University of Helsinki in Finland. In this paper, we're reporting on our work on display personalization. So creating large public displays that respond to users as they walk past them. We have a long history in this space going back many years. And in 2008, we created a system using Bluetooth friendly names to personalize screens. And in 2014, at Kai, we described Tacita, an architecture for, again, using phones to personalize screens, but this time in a privacy preserving way. Our Tacita architecture consists of five core components, Tacita channels, display gateways, public displays, map providers, and the Tacita mobile clients. Our own previous work and the previous work of others has principally been around short term trials. But in this paper, we deploy our system at scale on multiple displays over a period of many months. And that leads to some new experiences and new insights. So when we talk about this work, we're often asked a number of very common questions. The first of which is the most straightforward. Does it work? And our experiences of controlled experiments tell us that it's feasible to get content onto screens in a timely manner. But more importantly, the long term deployments that we have with this large scale system tell us that that's true in practice as well. We see very few failed requests and we can respond to users in a timely fashion, displaying their content within one or two seconds of them entering the range of a display. Will people use a system such as Tacita? The evidence from our trial suggests that yes, they will. In common with any mobile app, we see a drop off and the exact data is reported in the paper. But critically, over 30% of users continue to use the system after seven days. And whilst they don't engage with the configuration pages, they do still engage with the system and still actually trigger display personalization requests as they walk around campus. So another common question is around the content. What content should these systems be showing to make them successful? What is it that people would like to personalize and have shown on the displays? In the context of our deployment, we found that this was principally around travel applications. So people wanted to know about uh, incoming buses, the buses that they were gonna catch and, and any congestion in the local area. But this may be deployment specific. So for example, it may be that in another setting, other applications would be more popular. Thus, we suggest that maybe there isn't one killer application, but that the killer application perhaps varies by deployment, or that in fact, there is no killer application in some deployments, and instead the value comes from cumulative applications lots of small applications that each deliver a little piece of value. One important finding though, was that social media was not a particularly strong requirement for our users. And this has been confirmed in our own prior research, discussions with users. The content that we typically want to see on our mobile phones most often is not necessarily gonna translate very well to these large scale deployments of personalizable displays. So those are our most frequently asked questions, but of course there's a lot more information in the paper. In particular, we give you a lot of detail on the architecture and the changes that were made to the architecture in order to accommodate a large scale deployment. We talk about the framework that we provide for content development and the different pieces of content that we developed. We do an extensive study of the system in use. So this includes five months worth of usage data where we look at the performance of the system, but also patterns of use. So spatial patterns, temporal patterns, applications that people tend to request. We also do some qualitative interviews with stakeholders, talking both to users and to content creators and display owners. Okay. And then finally, we provide eight observations that come out of our experiences that we think will be useful for future developers and deployers of systems like Tacita. Okay. 